Look at that. That is the La La Farm entry into the meatloaf war. Hey folks, Rick here. This is La La Farm's entry into the meatloaf war. All right, we're gonna get at it now. Yeah, I'm challenging all of you content creators out there. I want your best shot at taking on La La Farm in the meatloaf wars. I start off a couple of, couple of red bell peppers. So we're gonna get these uh, red peppers all chopped up. Uh, we're gonna take, um, so I'm only I'm using two, two uh, red peppers in this. The actual recipe is a half a cup of red peppers per pound of meat. We have uh, two two pound packages of ground beef. This is a 90-10 mix. Um, so this is four times the typical recipe because I've got literally the whole family here today. Um, so we chop up the chop up the red bell pepper first. Then we're gonna saute this just to kind of sweat it down a little bit so it's not crunchy in the meatloaf. And then we're gonna do the same thing with a, or with the uh, a red onion. So this is a uh, sweet red onion that I'm using. We're gonna chop this, we're gonna throw this then into the saute pan as well. And again, this isn't really to cook it, it's just to soften it up a little bit. And uh, it's really more just to soften it up so that the vegetables in the meatloaf are not, are not crunchy. I hate crunchy vegetables in my meatloaf. So now we're gonna kind of soften these. I put about a uh, quarter stick of butter in here. Um, give it a little bit of fat, flavor this up a little bit. So these will cook down um, once they're soft. That's all I'm looking for. Uh, then we're gonna start putting the actual meatloaf together. So while that's doing that, that's on low, I'll start getting the other stuff together. So since this is a, a pretty large recipe, again, this is four times what I normally do for a recipe um, I'm using. So normally this recipe is uh, a one pound, um, one pound of ground beef. I'm doing four pounds because I, again, we got a whole family here. To that, we're gonna add some quick oats. It's a half a pound or a half a cup of, of quick oats per one pound of ground beef. So we're gonna be using in this recipe, because we're using four pounds, it's gonna be uh, two cups of oats. And this really just helps bind it. This uh, will swell up, this will get soft and kind of help bind it together um, in the recipe, along with the egg. In a normal recipe, again, a one pound recipe, it's gonna be one egg. Because this is a four pound recipe, we're gonna use Lala eggs. These are the ones that we sell. We end up selling from our uh, flock about uh, 40 dozen a week is what we sell from the farm. So one of our Easter eggers. So we're going to use four eggs in this recipe. Look at how bright orange that is. I mean, you don't get any fresher than that. One of our Welsomer eggs. One of our bar, or one of our, uh, uh, oh, the Lighthorn? No, the Delaware eggs. Delaware. And this is the Rhode Island red eggs. So we got four eggs there. We're going to slightly beat that just to kind of get the yolk incorporated in there a little bit. And it goes into the mix. One teaspoon. So it's basically in the one pound recipe. In the one pound recipe, it's a quarter teaspoon. So again, we're multiplying that by four to make it one teaspoon of black pepper. We're gonna use a half a teaspoon 
of salt per pound. So that's going to be two teaspoons of salt for four pounds. All right, so the recipe calls for an eight ounce can. This is a 14 ounce can. So I'm going to use about a can and a half of just diced tomatoes. Now a good twist on this. In fact, hold that thought. In the Navy, that's what's called an abrupt, an abrupt change of course. So I'm going to use Rotel. These are like um, diced tomatoes with green chilies. These are the eight ounce cans. Or these are 10 ounce cans. I'll throw them both in there. Um, it just adds a little bit of a additional flavor to it. This is unsalted. Use the juice and everything in there. Helps kind of get it incorporated. So those vegetables are still are still uh, sweating down a little bit. Um, so while those are wrapping up, I'm gonna wash my hands. We're gonna dig into getting this incorporated, uh, and then we're gonna put it onto the loaf pan. That's just what additional egg in the bowl. So we're just gonna dig in, start getting this incorporated. So a lot of these recipes, they call for all kinds of fancy things like Worcestershire sauce and soy sauce I've seen in recipes. You know, this is just not a lot of ingredients in this. And, you know, it's one of those things I learned in the Navy. Keep it simple, stupid. Not that I'm calling anybody stupid, but there's some truth to that. Keep it simple. It's the KISS method. K-I-S-S. -S. So, that's good and incorporated there. So. All we're missing now in the in the actual loaf mix is to get our vegetables in there. We'll get those incorporated in and then uh, we'll put it onto the loaf pan and start cooking it. So we got the vegetables sweated down. See, it's basically just makes them a little bit softer. So when we cook this, uh, it's not crunchy. I don't like crunchy meatloaf. So we've got that in there. So while we've been doing this, I've got the oven preheated um, or en route to heating at 375 degrees. Um, Probably not a good idea to mix it with your pans at this point. Well, that's why I'm doing it because that the meat's cold, but that stuff's hot. So once I get incorporated in, I'll dig back in with the hands. You just get better integration with your hands. Yeah, that's good. All right, so this is the pan. So here's, here's one area where our recipe kind of diverges from many of the others. Now, a lot of meatloaf recipes use a loaf pan. And what that loaf pan does is it forms that loaf up um, in the pan, all the fat, all of the juice stays within that pan. I don't like it like that. Um, I've made it before and it's just, it just kind of falls apart. Um, I prefer, we, we, I started using um, this kind of uh, drip pan 15 years ago and it just works really, really well. Now this is, this is a big batch, so it's gonna be a four pound loaf. Again, we got the entire family here except for my son-in-law who will be home in about a month um, he's been proudly serving in the United States Navy for uh, almost two years it's been since uh, my daughter has seen her husband um, I shouldn't say that she went over to Bahrain last year last Christmas or last fall was able to see him and but uh, we paid for her to go over there and see him in Bahrain. That was that was their Christmas present. But their daughters, um, who you see on film from time to time, Abigail and Amalia, haven't seen their dad in two years. Um, in fact, when they left, uh, Abigail was in kindergarten and Amalia wasn't even in school. Now they're just beautiful young ladies. So um, he's going to be home next month. Uh, so and they're going to be transferred up to Washington State. So this is one of the last few meals we're going to be getting. So there's the loaf. That's what's going to go into the oven to cook. Got to make the glaze now.
Another thing that differentiates this recipe is there's a glaze that we put on top of this um, that it cooks with. So that glaze kind of keeps the juices into the meatloaf and also cook some flavor into it. So that's what we're gonna mix up now. And then I'm gonna use a basting brush, put the glaze on, and then into the oven. So on a one pound recipe, it's uh, one third of a cup. So in this recipe, this is going to be um, one cup and a third because we're multiplying everything by four. And I know some people out there are going to say, oh my goodness, he's putting ketchup on top of me. Well, that's sacrilegious. Well, I disagree completely. I think this helps add a lot of flavor, helps keep a lot of the moisture into, into the meat. Um, but again, let the meatloaf wars tell the story. So let's catch up. And then for the one pound, for the one pound uh, recipe, it is one tablespoon. Can you open that? My hands are greasy. For the one pound recipe, it's one tablespoon of um, Golden's mustard or a brown mustard. I've even used Dijon and that's really good. Um, this is just golden spicy brown. So it's gonna be four tablespoons total of that. And again, this is just for the glaze. last ingredient on the glaze is the brown sugar. For the run pound recipe, it is uh, two tablespoons per pound. So we're gonna use eight tablespoons of, of brown sugar. I'm compacting it as I'm pulling it out of here. And this adds some really, really good uh, sweetness and tanginess uh, to the overall meatloaf recipe let's get that all stirred up into this so we'll put i know i've been talking about changing and converting between one pound and four pounds so when we post this we will put in the um in the comment section the whole recipe it's it's very simple um but Oh my goodness, is this, is this a good recipe? Um, you know, another way that I love having this is getting some nice, soft, uh, uh, some nice, soft uh, Italian or um, nice, hard Cuban bread. Either one. Um, I know there's a lot of diversity there, a range of, uh, of texture there, but either one of them, take a slice, slice it in half or two slices. You'll take some thin sliced provolone cheese. So you'll put a slice of uh, a slice of of the bread down, and you'll take a slice of the uh, provolone cheese, and then take about a one inch slab of this meatloaf, and put that on onto the bread, and then put another piece of provolone cheese on top of that, and then put it into a toaster oven or into a broiler for just a few minutes, just enough to to melt that cheese and toast the bread. Oh my goodness, is it good. Um, so, I mean, not only do I eat this, this recipe um, as a main course, that's what we're doing uh, tonight as a main course, but um, we very, I always make more than we eat. So um, this is what I'll have for breakfast tomorrow. My granddaughter, Madeline, who you see in, in the recipe, she just says I'm absolutely weird because my breakfast is always whatever I had for dinner the previous night because um, we got some we got some pretty good meals around here. All right, so we've got this nice and coated all the way around. Now, as this is cooking, what's going to happen is that what's going to happen is that this top will become this glaze kind of seals the top. It keeps that moisture into it and just adds this incredible sweetness to the entire loaf. So we've got the oven preheated. We're gonna stick this into the oven. You know, recipe says for about an hour. It's probably gonna be a little longer than an hour. We cook it up until the internal temperature right here in the middle is about 160 degrees. So probably take an hour, hour and a half or so. Um, so let's get it in the oven.
cook a little bit. So we are done. So a few degrees over, so it's about 165. So we're going to take it out and have us some meatloaf. There is our meatloaf. Perfect goodness. Four pounds of meatloaf goodness for the meatloaf wars. Look at that. That is the La La Farm entry into the meatloaf war. Bring it on, meatloaf lovers. Show us what you got. You got meatloaf, skillet cornbread. What kind of potatoes, Charles? Loaded mashed potatoes. Loaded mashed potatoes and a skillet apple pie. What do you think? What do you think? I think it looks delicious. Yes. And it looks delicious. What do you think? What do you think, Becca? Oh, I'm ready to eat. <laughs> she put bacon in it. Meatloaf in a second. Oh, it's yummy. You'll like it, I promise. Mama, Mama. Yes, let me get you guys your drink. Stay in your chairs. My boss is Lala. All right, so there you go. There is Lala's uh, entry into the Meatloaf Wars. I hope you like it. Give it a try uh, at the end of September. Uh, there's going to be another video that gets posted, and that'll essentially be the electronic voting box. Uh, so at that point, between now and the end of September, just go in there, look at all of these videos, and uh, make sure to uh, put in there which, which channel you're voting on for the winner of the Meatloaf Wars.